No, no, they go. The, the, oh. Stephanie, what do you want to say? Do you want DLT there? Because we're not all there. The DLT is going to present from up there. Yeah. We'll bring the mic up there. They'll plug in the you computer. You want DLT over there somewhere? Yeah. Okay, but so this is all. Yeah, take it. Take your slide away from me. I mean, I can bring my computer there. Yeah, no, we can move. There's one right there that I can move over. Ah, it's beautiful. So. Are you in a oh, preset great. mode? Is just to stay steady? Is it always there? Yeah. That's fine. So. That's fine. We need some more light. I can. Um, eventually, when they show their presentation, it needs to be darker, I think. Yeah, I think, I think that's exactly right. Sorry, Maya. I didn't have my phone. Sorry. I just want to know, Larry, are you sitting up here? Yeah, you, you can move up. Yeah, can move up. Yeah, Joe. Do you want to go over how the two completely new process? Um, yeah, let's see. Do you want to go over how the two completely new process? Uh, okay, right now. Um, it was actually, wasn't it attached to the, it was on the table? to go this way? Does that, that create any more room or space? Yeah, we just need to move left. We're going to move a little bit more. I don't have that sense tonight, Perfect. but I didn't have that sense the other night. <coughs> All right. Holy cow. Um,
We're timing it two minutes, you think? It's, we don't know yet. Hmm? When people come in to speak and they sign the form, we're going to time two minutes, or we're not sure yet. Not sure yet. Not sure yet. Okay. I think it, it could be very well two minutes. It is high tech. Should I just take the microphone? Or? No, no, the sign will just take over there. So it's oh. Cool. We'll do a fly you want. Oh, I should direct people. Yeah. That's fine. So let's just sign into the general. I think we're going to start, so we'll cue you now. We're going to start the first portion of the meeting. Just give me the thumbs up when you're ready. I'm going to introduce you. I'm going to introduce you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Josephine Beckman. I am the district manager of Community Board 10. I'd like to welcome you here this evening um, to the Traffic and Transportation Committee. There are two items on today's agenda. The first is a street renaming application for St. Phillips, um, and the second is a review of DOT's um, school safety plan. So I just want to, before I introduce the chair of the committee, Jack Zhang, um, I would just like to review um, street renaming guidelines in Community Board 10. Um, during the first month, um, once an application is received by the district office, the Traffic and Transportation Committee will interview the applicant, review their application, and entertain a friendly discussion. At this time, the applicant um, was invited to attend and appear. Um, and we will ask questions this evening if anyone has. And then during the next month, um, the committee will adopt a resolution um, on the matter, whether to, to um, approve the application and then um, send it over to the city council. So that's a little sense of, of guidelines. Um, I'm going to now introduce the chair of the Traffic and Transportation Committee, Jack Zhang. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to tonight's uh, meeting. Um, so a couple points of order I wanted to make. Uh, unfortunately, tonight we can't uh, ask, answer any questions from the live stream due to technical issues here. So if you are on the live stream or have questions viewing the video um, afterwards, feel free to email our district um, board. Um, uh, if, if you have any questions, then we can, we can help direct the, the answers there. Um, second, if you want to speak and you have been here, please sign in to the left here. Um, there will be a sign-in sheet as well as a green form to sign to speak on behalf of either two items um, we have today. Um, and then lastly, I would like to welcome Evelyn Harris to speak about the St. Uh, Phillips, Phillips Episcopal uh, Church renaming, uh, street renaming on the corner of 11th Avenue of 80th Street. Please welcome Evelyn. Good evening, my name is Evelyn Harris, and I'm here to um, discuss consideration for a street renaming uh, St. Philip's Square or St. Philip's Way at the corner of 80th Street and 11th Avenue. First off, I want to thank Community Board 10 for putting this on the agenda tonight, and I also want to thank them for all the work that they do um, it's amazing. You guys are great. Thank you very much. Uh, I could do this off the cuff, or I was told it would be also good just to read the letter 
that we wrote to send to uh, community board 10, so that's what I will do right now. And this is in regards to St. Philip's Episcopal Church, located at 1072 80th Street, Brooklyn, New York. It has been serving the community for 124 years. We are requesting to have the southwest corner of 11th Avenue at 80th Street, co-named St. Philip's Square. Please review the following as examples of acts we have undertaken that have had an enduring impact on our community and New York City. St. Philip's doors are always open to help our neighbors and others seeking help in recovering from addictive behaviors. St. Philip's also looks to the youth in the community and hosts Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts troops. Another way that St. Philip's supports community outreach is through its connection with Diker Heights Civics, Civic Association. St. Philip's hosts the following organizations. We host Alcoholics Anonymous, which meet in the parish hall uh, during the week. Narcotics Anonymous, also in the parish hall. Gamblers Anonymous, um, also. Boy Scouts of America, Boy Scouts Troop 205, and Cub Scout Pack 205. Diker Heights Civics Association. Additional acts of St. Phillips that have a lasting impact on our community and that reflect positively on the city include community service. We have provided work opportunities for people to satisfy their community service requirements. We have a marathon runner's dinner. It's uh, St. Phillips supports New York City marathon runners all through the city with a free pasta dinner the night before the annual event. We also host free lunch and dinners that are served to the local community and the invitation is extended throughout New York City to celebrate Thanksgiving. We have a picnic on the church grounds and a welcome Sunday. The priest has um, made a um, concern with feminine hygiene and we provide free feminine hygiene products to low income families. We also have the annual blessing of the animals, which is celebrated every October and complete with animal gifts, treats, and St. Francis medals. NYPD mounted like to bring their horses and anyone can bring their beloved companion animals. We have an outdoor Christmas tree lighting. All are invited to watch and participate as the church grounds are lighted up. Caroling and refreshments are added to the community celebration as people walk and enjoy the Diker Heights lights. We also have on the grounds individual garden boxes which are available to the community to grow vegetables and flowers at St. Phillips. And we also provide food drives. We collect food and other necessities for community members in need. In honor of those who perished in the attacks of September 11, 2001, St. Phillips has established a 9-11 Memorial Garden next to the front entrance. We trust that these examples of our acts of outreach and services to the community and beyond will illustrate the importance of St. Phillips' impact. We therefore respectfully request the co-naming of the southwest corner of 11th Avenue and 80th Street in Brooklyn, New York, to be St. Philip Square. Thank you very much. Thank you, Evelyn. Um, first, I'll turn it over to the board for, uh, sorry, to the committee for any questions. I don't have any questions, but it's always good when you submit this to get letters from other people or families to go along with it, because there's a lot of other submissions. And I always found 
that when they go through the files, having more letters from all different people, that really makes a big difference. You would have to ask. Uh, is this sign with these co-namings, is it kind of be a green sign, typical? Or is it going to be a different color? A different, the color of the sign, I'm saying, does that DOT have a policy? I know sometimes they have police officers, like a blue sign, is a, gr a green, you know, a red sign for a firefighter. Standard green. But, you know, it sometimes causes confusion, like the Al Nahas Way. That's, that's, most people call it Third Avenue. That's, just a comment. That's okay. Um, I did not get any other further speaker forms from anyone in public, but if, if there's anyone in the public that wants to speak on this, that's cool. Okay. So the next step here is to for us to have another meeting on this, mm -hmm. just with the TNT. So feel free to join that if you if you would like. Um, after that, then we will present it back to the regular uh, committee. Um, Regular board, apologies, I'm getting a lot of terms mixed up. Uh, the regular board for then writing a letter to the city council member um, to then push it forward. So, um, you know, obviously feel free to send any additional letters of support that you that you can, and it'll be it'll be helpful um, um, to that end. Cool. Thank you. Uh, just in the interest of time, uh, we're just going to move on to the next topic. Um, the next topic is uh, seven, which is a, uh, a street safety proposal from the DOT. So our previous meeting, um, our previous TNT meeting, we had a presentation by the Department of Transportation um, about this exact same topic, 7th Avenue and Poly Place, uh, literally the street right outside here. We will be reviewing the same exact presentation that I asked uh, DOT to, to step up um, to do the same presentation and any additional ones. Um, and then if you have questions throughout, please feel free to fill out the speaker form, put it on my desk here uh, in front of me, and then I'll ask you to come up and we'll keep it orally just to, uh, to keep it in the interest of time. Um, please keep your comments to roughly two to three, three minutes max, um, just to make sure we get to hear everyone that wants to speak about uh, this topic. Um, so without further ado, I'll just give it a second for. Here. Just to make sure, is everyone able to hear me okay? Can we turn the mic up a little bit? It's going to wait until some other people come in here. Good evening, everyone. I know a few people are walking in. And I just want to review some of um, stated rules for our public meeting. Our Community Board 10 welcomes all to attend and participate at our meetings. Um, we abide by the New York City Open Meetings Law. And the goal of our public meetings is for all to participate in an environment that allows anyone to provide comment on the matter before the community board. All are welcome to participate um, in this public meeting this evening. Um, we have a presenter tonight, the Department of Transportation. Um, we're going to ask that they complete their presentation. At the conclusion of their presentation, we will have question and answer from the committee. And then we will open it up to um, public session. And the public will have the opportunity. Can you hear me? Is that better? OK. So at the conclusion of the presentation from the Department of Transportation, we're going to have committee member questions. And then we're going to open it up to the public for questions. If you would like to speak, we're going to ask that you fill out a green um, sheet. And we will be calling upon you if you have a question or a comment about the proposal that, that you would like to share. Um, Dorothy Garuccio is here from our staff. She's happy um, to, to bring over a, a, a sign-in sheet, if you'd like, um, to, to ask a question. We ask that you direct questions um, to the chair, Jack Zhang. And we ask that you be respectful um, of your fellow residents and the board here tonight. 
So without further ado, I am going to turn it back to Jack and he'll introduce the Department of Transportation. Okay, I'm gonna move the mic up now so the Department of Transportation can speak. Hi, thank you. Um, yes, my name is Alex. I'm with uh, the Department of Transportation School Safety Team. And um, yes, we're here to present a uh, safety proposal for uh, 7th Avenue and Poly Place right outside here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, the area we're, look at, we're looking at right here is outlined in red. Um, a large part of why we're looking here, and specifically us as the school safety team, is because uh, we have a new school opening up in the fall. MS 407 will have about 600 students uh, at the corner of 7th Avenue and 86th Street. Um, and then, of course, right here, Poly Prep, another school. Um, we've got uh, Maimonides Hospital at 7th Avenue and 92nd Street, and then the VA Hospital down on Poly Place. Um, is, sorry, OK, is this better? Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, so yes, yeah, so we've, we've received uh, some concerns from uh, the community and various elected officials, um, specifically regarding uh, you know, safety around uh, students getting to and from uh, Poly Prep and the, the new school that's going to be opening up in the fall. Um, we've got a couple bus routes along uh, the area here. Um, the B8 and the B70 run along 7th Avenue, and then the B1, the X28, and the X38 run on 86th Street. And then um, north of 92nd Street, 7th Avenue is a local truck route, and then 86th Street is also a local truck route. So two schools, two hospitals, lots of buses, trucks, definitely a lot going on in this area. Um, so we, we look at the crash data, and we see that um, you know, within the area we're looking at, uh, there have been, uh, in the past five years that we have uh, data for, uh, there were 110 total injuries. Uh, two severe injuries and one fatality. 15% um, of the injuries were pedestrians and more than half of those were uh, while the pedestrian was crossing the street with a, with a walk signal. Um, and so that's, you know, of course, especially concerning to us as the school safety team right here with uh, a couple schools in the area. And so what we're looking at right now, this is what 7th Avenue currently looks like. Um, you know, it's got, uh, again, a local truck route north of 92nd Street two bus routes below 92nd Street, um, and right now it's 60 feet wide. It's got you know, one lane in each direction with bike lanes and parking on either side and then a big uh, painted median. And um, you know, what we found is this leads to pretty long pedestrian crossing distances and um, the kind of wide open nature of the street can lend itself to uh, speeding and other forms of reckless driving. Um, so again, here we've got, um, you know, pedestrians have to cross 60 feet of road to make it all the way across. Um, and especially when you've got uh, cars trying to turn across the crosswalk at the same time, it can get um, a little harrowing sometimes. Um, we also have uh, at uh, 88th Street and Parrot Place, uh, we have this slip lane where vehicles are able to turn really quickly off of 7th Avenue. Um, and it kind of breaks up the walking path for pedestrians. If you're trying to walk down the west side of 7th Avenue, you kind of have to zigzag around to get around this slip lane. Um, and it creates kind of two points of conflict areas right in, you know, right next to each other, uh, which is, again, with a new school opening up, uh, not ideal. Um, and then also looking at, you know, how people are going to be getting to and from the new school that's opening up. Um, you know, we will have, you know, part of the school loading area will be on Battery Avenue. Um, and so if we, the way the grid currently functions, um, if you've got a school bus trying to reach that area on Battery Avenue, they're gonna have to go down 
either 7th Avenue or Parrot Place all the way to 90th Street and then loop back up to go those two blocks of Battery Avenue to make it to the school. So it can be a little, uh, it, it could be a little much. Um, again, we, uh, we have some concerns about reckless driving. Um, down at the intersection of 7th Avenue and Poly Place, uh, we definitely see lots of evidence of people doing donuts in that big wide open intersection. Um, there's another slip lane down there that allows for fast right turns through the crosswalk. Um, I've definitely seen uh, several people kind of blowing through the stop sign there. Um, you've got a really long unprotected uh, crossing for pedestrians and this uh, kind of painted triangle island here um, is susceptible to illegal parking and isn't like a, an actually safe refuge for pedestrians while they're in the middle of crossing the street. Um, on 86th Street, we've got uh, lots of people coming from the Gowanus Expressway. Uh, again, three bus routes, local truck route, more uh, long pedestrian crossings. And then um, several of the bus stops uh, in the area are, uh, the landing area is not very accessible for people using wheelchairs. Um, it's kind of you know in the grass or muddy strip uh, between the sidewalk and the curb, uh, which can you know cause issues for for people in wheelchairs or pushing strollers or whatever. Um, we also see that uh, the sidewalk is a little narrow. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's five feet wide, but kind of squeezed in between, especially on the, the park side, kind of squeezed between these big trees and the chain link fence. So what we've seen is a lot of people uh, who want to jog around here end up doing it in the street, in the bike lane, which uh, is not you know, what we would love to see. Um, we've also definitely seen a lot of speeding happening. Um, we recently went out and did a, a survey with a uh, you know, radar speed detector and found everybody within, uh, within an hour that we checked was speeding. Um, and it was some, some pretty high speeds. So that was definitely concerning. This was, uh, these were taken uh, right around uh, Mumanides Hospital. Uh, so again, kind of right next to the hospital, very close to one school and uh, a future school speeding like this is uh, you know, definitely concerning for us to see. Um, we know there have also been complaints about uh, illegal long-term truck parking in the area. Um, we know that's, that's been an ongoing issue. Um, so here is our proposal. Um, our, our main proposal is along 7th Avenue to basically um, take the bike lanes, move them over towards the curb get rid of the painted median and basically turn the two standard bike lanes into one two-way protected path. Uh, this also leaves us with some space to provide kind of a painted sidewalk extension um, that could give extra space for people walking or jogging along the park. Um, the removal of the painted median kind of tightens things up a little bit, makes it less uh, inviting for people to speed. Um, and then the protected bike lane will uh, provide a safer, dedicated space for cyclists and also remove uh, conflicts with bikes and vehicles. Um, so this is kind of where we're looking at uh, along 7th Avenue, south of 86th Street, and then going down, looping around onto Poly Place, ending uh, in front of the VA hospital. Um, again, upgrading the, the standard bike lanes that are there now to a two-way parking protected path look very similar to this previous school safety project uh, that our team did in Queens, uh, which was a similar condition, school on one side of the street, park on the other side of the street, um, turned into a two-way protected path. Um, so again, this will help calm traffic, reduce speeding, and uh, make it so that when pedestrians are crossing the street, they don't have to walk as far uh, while in the lane with vehicles. Um, so what we found when we've done projects like this in the past is that not only does safety improve for cyclists, it improves for everybody. Um, the, the crashes actually go down kind of across the board and um, safety improves for pedestrians as well as motor vehicle occupants. Um, so again, here's kind of that mid-block condition where we would have still parking on either side, um, one travel lane in each direction, and then we would just have the two-way protected bike lane and a painted sidewalk extension along the east curb uh, alongside the park. So uh, we also have at several intersections uh, left turn bays. 
Um, we plan to maintain those where they're needed to reduce backups and help clarify traffic movements. Uh, and then we're still able to maintain the protected bike lane there. Um, and so it would look very similar to the way it does now, just with the bike lane over along the curb instead of in between the moving vehicles and the parked cars. So those turn bays would be maintained at 86th Street, at 92nd Street, and at the VA hospital on Poly Place. Um, we also have a few spots where there are bus stops uh, along the park, and we uh, our plan would be to install bus boarding islands, um, which is basically kind of a floating bus landing area to remove conflicts between bikes and buses, provide bus riders a safe, uh, dedicated place to stand, and make it easier for the bus to uh, pick up and drop off passengers. Um, so. It would look like this, basically, instead of uh, the parking, the floating parking lane, it would be a floating bus stop, essentially. So this is another former school safety project in Upper Manhattan uh, near a school where you know we installed a two-way bike lane with a bus boarding island. So this allows the bus to pull over and not have to pull into the bike lane. Uh, so it removes that conflict. And uh, we just wanted to note as part of this uh, that, you know, so there are currently three bus stops uh, along the park within our project area, uh, one on the north side of Poly Place, across from the VA hospital, and then two on 7th Avenue, one uh, just across from Poly Prep here, and then another one down closer to the intersection of 7th Avenue and Poly Place. That middle one right there is uh, scheduled to be removed as part of MTA's current, the current draft of their Brooklyn bus network redesign. Um, so. You know, we're we're not showing an island. Uh, you know, we're we're not showing that bus stop remaining because that's their current plan. I know, um, you know, MTA's plans for these redesigns uh, take a little while, so you know, we'll see where that ends up. But as of now, that stop is scheduled to go away. Um, so, another part of our proposal is to close the slip lane at Parrot Place uh, and Seventh Avenue and Eighty Eighth Street. Uh, It'll help maintain uh, a straighter path for pedestrians, especially uh, school children getting to the new school. Um, it also will uh, help clarify traffic movements and make it so that uh, there aren't as many conflict points right around here. Um, and we will uh, be maintaining uh, driveway access for uh, the driveways that are along that area. Um, so a, as part of that slip lane closure, we're also proposing to reverse the direction of 88th Street and 90th Street. So 88th Street would be westbound instead of eastbound, 90th Street would be eastbound instead of westbound. Um, this would allow us to close the slip lane and still maintain easy access to Parrot Place. Uh, so instead of going straight onto Parrot Place from 7th Avenue, you would turn onto 88th Street and then down um, instead of having to go a roundabout way, and then again, this will help provide a direct pedestrian path for people walking along Seventh Avenue. Um, and it'll the the direction change will also allow uh, easier routing for pick up and drop off from the new school. So again, instead of uh, school buses having to go all the way down to 90th Street and then back up Battery Avenue to reach that area for the new school, it would uh, go right along 88th Street. Um, again, uh, within the closed slip lane area, the driveway access would be maintained, similar to uh, this Banker's Acre Plaza in Brooklyn. Um, so again, it would be you know pedestrianized space, but uh, people needing to get in and out of their driveways could still be able to do so. Um, so again, this part of part of the reason for the uh, street redirections uh, is because you know currently with 88th Street being eastbound, if we were to close that slip lane, it would kind of cause a big circuitous route to get to Parrot Place. Um, so it uh, becomes a lot more feasible if we're able to reverse 88th Street and 90th Street so that people can actually easily get to Parrot Place still. Um, so another part is uh, closing the slip lane down at 7th Avenue and Poly Place, uh, kind of converting that into a more standard intersection uh, routing all of the vehicles around the uh, island, which we would build out in concrete,
to provide a better uh, pedestrian space, shorter crossing distance, uh, and the bike lane would go along behind the island. Um, and again, here's, a, here's another bus boarding island. This is the one that would be across from the VA hospital on Poly Place. Um, similar design, the bus would pick up and drop off on this big concrete island here. And then um, at the intersection of 86th Street and 7th Avenue, um, we would extend the leading pedestrian interval across 86th Street which helps give pedestrians a head start so that they can start walking and get the walk signal before vehicles get the green light to turn. Uh, it lets, lets them become more visible and less likely to get uh, hooked by a turning driver. Um, we're also proposing a new leading pedestrian interval across 7th Avenue, so again, give vehicles a head start. Um, as part of the construction of the new school going on, they will be building a concrete curb extension here uh, at their corner to reduce the crossing distance and slow down uh, turning vehicles. And then all along 86th Street between Fort Hamilton Parkway and 10th Avenue, we would be uh, doing some adjustments to the timing for the traffic signals to add or extend those leading pedestrian intervals at each of these intersections uh, to give pedestrians either a new head start or an extended head start. Um, and then we would be adding a dedicated right turn lane for vehicles going west on 86th Street, turning onto Dahlgren Place uh, to get onto the Gowanus Expressway. And then kind of as we, with all of the adjustment here, um, it would be tweaking the signal timing to make it uh, match the existing traffic patterns a little more uh, to hopefully ease up congestion. Um, so when we uh, do projects like this that involve um, changing the way the street works, you know, it obviously impacts uh, things at the curb. And so this would, this would include uh, removal of uh, a few parking spaces at several locations along the area. So, you know, a couple spots here at 86th Street for daylighting and visibility improvements. Um, six spaces here at the closed slip lane at Parrot Place. Another two down here at, uh, 90, at 88th Street, uh, four here at 92nd Street. Um, three additional spaces would open up with uh, the removal of that bus stop uh, at Poly Place. Um, 13 spaces uh, would be removed as part of the slip lane closure down there, and then another four to improve visibility and, in the kind of middle of the T intersection there or at uh, the VA hospital. Um, so again, kind of an overview of what we're proposing, narrowing the roadway, reduce speeding and reckless driving, um, upgrade the bike lanes to improve safety for cyclists and other road users, uh, change the directions of 88th and 90th streets to improve traffic flow, uh, close the slip lanes to add some pedestrian space, reduce the crossing distances, install two bus boarding islands to improve the bus loading, and improving the signal timing along 86th street to add or extend those pedestrian head starts and uh, improve traffic flow. Um, so for the truck parking issue, um, we have noticed that uh, sometimes streets with upgraded infrastructure tend to be less desirable for long-term truck parking. Um, we are going to be asking the 68th Precinct for additional enforcement of this issue here. Um, and of course, uh, you know, if the truck parking is the biggest concern, uh, we could just get rid of the parking along the park there. Um, and we know that's probably not the, uh, the, the way that uh, this wants to go, but just throwing it out there. Um, so we also have a couple locations where we have uh, traffic control studies pending. Uh, we're hoping to add a new traffic signal at 7th Avenue and 88th Street. Um, we've noticed you know, people crossing their uh, mid-block, it would help uh, you know, add another location for people to cross 7th Avenue. Um, and then down here, kind of at the very south end of the park, uh, right where this concrete median begins, um, another mid-block crossing there to give people a safe place to cross uh, between the two pieces of the park uh, and would also allow us to extend the protected bike lanes down to that point and then give access to the 
other end of the park and uh, which would allow some access to the uh, Shore Parkway Greenway. Um, so that is our proposal and would love to hear your questions. Um, Jack, if you wanna take these. All right, uh, so how this is gonna work, um, Leroy, did you wanna say anything before we kick off? Cool, so how it's gonna work is if you have uh, anything you wanna say, please fill out one of these forms that Dorothy's gonna pass around. Um, once you fill it out, it'll come to me and then I'll call out your name. And if you can come up here, ask your questions, uh, direct them to me, but then the DOT will obviously answer them. Um, keep your comments to two, three minutes or so. Uh, obviously, you can stay up here if you have a question that you want them to answer. Um, okay, so first, I, I have Constantine Hatzis uh, who wanted to speak. Constantine, yes. Good, good evening. Um, so I am a bike commuter. I ride every single day, rain or shine. I work from, Bay, I'm a dog walker. I work from Bay Ridge all the way to Prospect Heights and everywhere, and everywhere in between, between Prospect Heights and Bay Ridge. Um, I ride my bike everywhere. I live in Bay Ridge near uh, Cannonball Park. Um, that area is extremely car centric. There's no biking or pedestrian safety infrastructure. Um, I've been doored, had to get dental work done because of it. Um, I, my wife got hit by a car at the food town on 3rd Avenue a few weeks ago. Uh, drivers are constantly running red lights, stop signs, and we're not getting any safety improvements that um, our area really needs. Um, on my way here, uh, I almost got hit by two cars. Uh, one car making a left turn on 92nd onto Fort Hamilton Parkway. Um, they yielded for me at the last second while I was riding my bike. I had to ride away. Um, and then another car who made an illegal red turn to go on to the uh, Verrazano. Um, at the next block, I saw a dead body draped in a white sheet. I don't know if any of you guys saw that on your way here. I think it's really ironic. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people are getting murdered on our streets. Um, I live by where Anne Marie was murdered on 97th Street. Um, that was very traumatic, uh, and we desperately need these changes. This proposal is beautiful. It's exactly what our community needs, and I would really urge the DOT to do more, especially on 4th Avenue, connecting Sunset Park down to Cannonball Park. We need it. So many people depend on it. Everyone, I had to ride on the sidewalk to get here. I had to risk getting a ticket and getting yelled at by other people because there's no infrastructure for me, there's no room for me, and, and pedestrians and cyclists should never have to compete with vehicles. We should have our own separate space. It's better for everybody, and it's safer. Um, with that being said, is there a timeline for a Fourth Avenue bike lane, a protected bike lane? Thank you, we're gonna move to um committee questions, I'm just gonna turn it over. But I do wanna mention, shortly before the meeting, we did have a pedestrian fatality on 92nd Street in Dahlgren. Um, and you know, we, we are very concerned about pedestrian safety. Is this, is this better? Is this better? I, I just, again, I'm gonna remind everyone, let's be respectful of one another. We're not gonna to tolerate cross-talking or shouting or yelling. We're gonna have people come up one person at a time following committee questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right, do we have any committee questions? Okay, is it a, can you hear if I speak this way into the, no, still, you're right in the front. No. I think for streaming, I can scream. Does that work? I'm, Okay, these questions are for DOT. I was curious if you spoke already with the Army Garrison. This is, okay. Uh, yes, well, the we, plan, yes, we the have. The plan hasn't changed from when you first presented it to us, so I was wondering um, if they had given any feedback, but specifically, are you going to implement a traffic light at the 
Polly Place and 7th Avenue Gate. That's the back gate of uh, Fort Hamilton. Um, okay, so we, yes, we have spoken with the Army Garrison uh, and the VA Hospital about uh, this project. Um, they did not uh, give us any uh, major comments or anything. They 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 didn't they didn't have any concerns or issues with it. Um, we did you know make sure that we're going to be working with them to ensure that uh, their operations are not impacted by our work at this intersection. Um, the uh, the idea here at that intersection would not be for a traffic signal, but it would uh, become basically a regular always stop intersection. Um, and I believe was that was that every, everything. Um, okay, I. I know with traffic lights, they have to meet the warrants. I don't right. know if that could be relooked because as is um, a couple of things, no one pays attention to the stop sign that's on 7th Avenue. So when you're exiting um, or even trying to enter from Poly Place, it's very, very dangerous. Uh, the other thing is that slip lane in a way gives some relief to any people trying to enter the fort from Poly Place because you can get past the backups. There are tremendous backups on 92nd Street and on, um, I'm sorry, well there are, on 92nd Street that feeds into 7th Avenue and then from Poly Place if the Belt Parkway is backed up, Cropsey Avenue into that. So if you're trying to enter or exit Fort Hamilton, it's impossible. Um, and with the school buses that park and even double park in front of Poly Prep on 7th Avenue, there really is no flow. Uh, so I'm asking that you please consider that. It is not a good situation right now, and I'm not sure that your proposal addresses those issues. So. We can definitely take a look at uh, if that uh, meets the warrants for a traffic signal. We'll, we'll definitely add that to our list of uh, study locations. Or any other design mm -hmm. or, yes, please. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Any other committee member members? I noticed that you have a, you were talking about eliminating the wide medians on 7th Avenue. Yes. It looks like you're preserving them on Poly Place. Is that part of your plan or is there? Um, uh, just for this portion right here leading up to uh, 7th Avenue, um, because of kind of the way the street width changes a lot, um, the, there we have the, the turn bays going into the hospital and then kind of uh, the way the, the street kind of weaves to get to 7th Avenue, uh, these two little stretches of median would remain, yes, as it's drawn here. What I have to say is more for the residents and the people that are affected by this every day. I like to hear both sides. But I, they made a great proposal on a PowerPoint. They were clear. I really like to hear from the residents. But I'm going to say this in as best I can. Please raise your hand if you have something to say. Don't yell something out. We have a limited of time that we hear. And I really would like to hear what people have to say. If they're going to speak there, if they're going to speak there, <laughs> that's perfect. Because I have to make a vote based on two sets of criteria. I don't want to do make a vote based on one criteria from the deal. I would really want to hear, because you live this every day. I don't. I don't have a car anymore. So please be as courteous. I know it's emotional. It's, it's heartbreaking. Nobody likes change. But do it so that we can make a, a better decision for the whole neighborhood. Thank you. Right. Okay, cool. So I do want to say one more thing before we get to the rest of this. Change is coming. The school is coming. That's already going to affect the neighborhood. I think the DOT is trying to make their best effort on trying to accommodate for that. So just keep that in mind as well. Like that's already going to happen. I saw it coming up when I was, you know, walking here. Um, so first we have Assembly Member Lester Chang. Okay, uh, can I welcome up um, Alan Leslie? Alan Leslie. Okay. Um, do I 
have to use the mic? Yes. yes. The mic should be yes. Can you hear me? The plan as it stands right now will create such traffic jams in this area, the likes of which are unimaginable. I urge the community board to rethink some of the existing plans and install a bicycle lane away from this area to another avenue away from the intersection of 86th Street and 7th Avenue. We don't even know if there was an impact study. And if there was, it wasn't mentioned in any notices that I've seen. The increased pressure on the intersection of 86th Street and 7th Avenue will have a negative effect on the business owners along 86th Street. Due to the traffic congestion, people could get disgusted and avoid the area altogether. They, I see this evening uh, the plan of putting of the, the bus islands, which are, are going to be removed the buses were going to, the route is going to be changed from 86th Street and it's going to be brought down to Poly Place uh, in an area where it's desolate. Uh, there's no mention of, of, of like a shelter for people to wait for the bus. Uh, whereas on 86th Street, if, peop, if it's raining, people can go in to a shop and get a coffee or something to get out of the rain or something like that. So. That, that's something that I think needs to be worked on. Um, there currently exist two lanes on the northbound traffic, 7th Avenue from Poly Place to 86th Street. Drivers driving north and wishing to make a turn onto the westbound direction of 86th Street move over to make a left, to make a turn onto the westbound direction of 86th Street. Move over to the left lane with a bicycle lane installed, you will remove one lane of traffic and when cars seek to turn onto 86th Street at 7th Avenue, traffic will back up and it will also affect the east and west traffic flow on 86th Street, which has an important bus stop at 86th and 7th Avenue. Uh, a bicycle lane in an area that has a flow of traffic coming into the area from the Verrazano Bridge, 92nd Street, exit. Then there's the change in the traffic direction on 88th and 90th streets, which will cause residents on Battery Avenue to have to drive all the way around to 96, 92nd Street to come up no northward on Battery Avenue. This move as well as the proposed bicycle lane and its repercussions will create more air pollution in an area that now has a public school with young children. How could you possibly jeopardize the health of children in this traffic jam that's going to be created? Uh, I urge the, the board to uh, review and consider other alternatives to this project uh, in the neighborhood, perhaps, but not where the proposed is now. The traffic along 86th Street and uh, it, uh, is, is, is already jammed up. This is going to create a nightmare. And there have been bicycle lanes installed in Manhattan on some of the northbound and southbound avenues. And where they have that, and then they have parking off, off the curb, you're going to see trucks making FedEx trucks and the you know, postal, post office trucks are going to double park and triple park, and it's going to be a nightmare. You will, you will see this and it'll be too late. So I just uh, recommend uh, you review and consider other alternatives. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, yeah uh, if, just if you could keep, do you have notes on what he said? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, thank you for your feedback on this. Um, I, uh, I'm gonna try to, uh, address all of your points um, to you. Uh, so one, uh, sorry, I, I might not go in order of the things that you brought up, but one uh, point I remember hearing you make is uh, a concern about uh, bus riders kind of standing in the open on the bus boarding island uh, in front of the VA hospital. Uh, the plan is to relocate the existing bus shelter to the bus boarding island so there will be a safe place for them to uh, stand under shelter um, 
in inclement weather or you know for shade. Um, uh, I think I heard you say something about um, uh, removal of a lane at 86th Street. Um, I, our proposal does not include removing any lane there, just to make sure we're we're being clear. Um, and then, um, do you have some more? yeah. Um, so uh, as part of our uh, analysis, we do for any project like this where we're changing traffic patterns or the way the street works, we do a robust traffic analysis that involves going out and recording the amounts of vehicles that are driving through um, and using industry standard traffic modeling software to um, look at, okay, what, what things look like now. We, we input the proposed changes we want to make and look at what the traffic model shows after that. Um, and our modeling shows uh, no adverse severe impacts to uh, traffic congestion in any part of the project area. Um, part of the reason we are proposing all of these changes to the signal timing along 86th Street is to help with uh, traffic congestion um, along 86th Street, especially where we know it's obviously a major concern. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you want to speak, please fill out a form. So thank you, DOT. We're going to move on to Dennis Tan, please. That's quite offensive, my man. But. So this presentation typically with DOT is posted on their website um, following the presentation. So going to the Department of Transportation's website, you'll be able to download the and actually share it. Um, if you signed in this evening at Community Board 10, we will be sending out an email. You can contact us on the notices that we sent out. We do have our email, and we do review, and we read every single email that comes in to us. Okay, or you could call the office. Yes, and you, if you just look up Community Board 10, our number is 718 for the live stream, 745-6827. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dennis. I live down the block on 7th Avenue. I only have two major concerns. One is the trucks that are constantly... Sorry, it's bad feedback. Can you hear me now? Further, closer? Further, it's good? I have two major concerns. My first concern are the trucks that are parked all along the park. On any given day, you can walk around. I've counted over 100 on any given day. Um, DOT, no one's doing anything about it. Um, they, do, they do nothing. These people park here all day, all night, all here on Saturday morning are just tools and wrenches dropping all morning. Uh, the second concern I have is the speeding that happens on 7th Avenue. Um, that one, no one's doing anything about either. Um, I don't think these proposal will stop that. Um, that's just my two comments. So please do something about that. Yeah, a speed camera is actually facing the wrong way. It's facing eastbound on 7th Avenue. It would be better if it was facing westbound because people start on 86th Street, they speed up. Where the camera is right now, there's only about 100, 200 yards until you reach 86th Street. That doesn't really do anything. Um, I don't know if, yeah. Same with Dahlgren, it's the same thing, so, right. So you start on 86, you can make it maybe 60 miles an hour but before you get to 92nd Street. So give my time to someone else. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Steven Lombardo. Hi, 
Hi, good, good evening, everybody. Can you all hear me? I, I was just, I, my only concern was the, uh, the consolidation of the bus stop in front of the dog park and the Ford dealership to be placed in front of the school. That'll allow the most safest access to the building for students that are gonna take public transportation into the building. That was my biggest concern, being somebody who will be working there. It's, it's very important for my kids to come through ingress and egress safely, and I think the consolidation of the bus stop is paramount to that happening. Thank you very much. Oh, and yes, we were talking about Battery Avenue, perhaps considering changing the direction of Battery Avenue, so that way during ingress and egress, bus loading can occur off the main street, not on 7th Avenue and 86th Street, but on the side street where the hotel is. Probably a safer consideration to take to avoid all the traffic patterns. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Ann Fawcett Ambia, apologies if I mispronounced the last name. Uh, this is a map that I made when the school was just a proposal with uh, traffic problems and stuff. So I just brought it because it's gonna be hard for me to explain. Um, I have two sets of problems. My pers I, first of all, I'm Ann Fawcett Ambia. I own the house at 658 Avery Street. This is right um, my community driveway entrance, me and eight other houses uh, along 88th Street are um, community driveway entrance for nine houses on 88th Street and three houses along Battery Avenue is right here on Battery Avenue between 90th and 88th. Now, if I want to get to 90, we only have two ways to get across. We live here. 86th Street and 92nd Street, because you cut us off when you put in the Verrazano Bridge from using 88th and 90th to get into Bay Ridge. When I want to go to 92nd Street, which is the way to get to the Food Town Supermarket and a lot of other things, right now I can come out of my driveway, turn right on 88th Street, go down Pattery, Parrot Place to 92nd and go this way. If you change the direction of 88th Street, how do I get to 92nd Street? I have to come up Battery Avenue, turn left on 88th Street, go this way up to uh, 86th Street. I may, I may be able to go straight, but I may not if you've got a whole bunch of school buses block on that block if I want to leave in the morning. Now, I live here. I'm 75. I'm retired. I need a car to go food shopping and a bunch of other things. Even if I can go straight, you're putting me into traffic on 86th Street. I have a light here. I have a light here. You're putting another light in here. Then I, I can't get on Pat Parrot Place anymore. I have to go through traffic on 7th Avenue with an, another traffic light you're planning to put in, a further traffic light down here on 92nd Street, another one over here. So you're going to give me five traffic lights I have to go through to get to 92nd Street when I used to just be able to go one block, go down and only have one light down here on, on 92nd Street. Now what about when I wanna get home from 86th Street? Now I turn this way, I go on the slip on Parrot Place, I simply go around the block and I park in my parking place, me and everybody else. What your proposal means is that I have to go, I no longer can access Parrot Place, I have to go all the way down 7th Avenue to 92nd Street, turn around the corner, and come up Battery Avenue. You're worrying about inconveniencing school buses that come twice a day that should not be driving on either 88th Street or 90th Street because those are both small streets with a big school bus. You, the buses need to come on 88th Street, 86th Street, go down 7th Avenue, which is a wider street, to 92nd Street, which is a wider street, and then come up Battery Avenue. Uh, unless somebody ch suggested changing the direction of Battery Avenue, which would probably mess up a whole bunch of other people. But, you know, speaking for my people who live between 90th and 88th, 
and along this on 88th Street, um, we could at least go that way, and maybe you would be able to, you know, not have to go all the way down to 92nd. But buses should be, if, if you're not changing this street, the buses should go on 7th Avenue down to 92nd Street because you're going to be, those buses, 600 children, those buses are going to be hitting cars on these narrow streets, which is what happens anyway. I live right here. You, you're suddenly coming up with eight accidents that happen on the intersection of my block. When I raise the issue of accidents over here asking for a stop sign to be put on, in along 88th Street, I, uh, they said they did a traffic study and they, they couldn't find any examples of accidents happening right there, even though if everybody on my block is out there every time we hear a crash. So you're not taking, you're, you're completely ignoring the local residents and what we need to live here in favor of a school, which yes, we need new schools, but you cannot put, the, you cannot ignore what you're doing to our quality of life. And you can't have school buses coming down either 88th Street or 90th Street anyway. It is, you know, you're already eliminating parking places. What are you, what are you doing to us? I mean, are you planning to eliminate our residences altogether? This is ridiculous. Thank you. Oh, yeah. OK, thank you. All right. All right, thank you, Anne. Um, next, we have Elizabeth. And apologize, I cannot reach her. <laughs> Less for a handwriting. Hi, so I'm going to speak to you on behalf of the residents of Dahlgren Place because 55, 59, 39, 32, we all are against this. The 88th and 90th Street should remain the way it is. If you want to make a change, I'm also the new principal of 407, which will be, have a specialized program. If you want to make a change, change battery into the different direction so that the buses can unload and load there and continue to leave 88th and 90th the way, direction that they're in. Taking away parking spots, like he said, the trucks, no one does anything. I make a 311 complaint every morning when I run around that park every day because the trucks cannot, uh, do not allow me to run. I have to run on the street because it blocks all the light once, once it's sunlight savings time. No, no one does anything. 311, Justin Brandon, 68th Precinct, no one has done anything in the last 10 years that I've lived here, and I don't think they will do anything. And taking away parking spots is only going to affect the residents. It's not going to affect. We are now going to have 100 teachers who are going to be parking there because 407 has two different schools that are going there. So it's taking away parking. I already can't find a spot. I'm jealous of people who live in, in, in Diker Heights who have parking spots. I bought a house in Dahlgren Place in hopes that I could always park in front of my house. I will never find a parking spot in front of my house. And in terms of uh, atrocities, DOT should be working on 92nd and Dahlgren Place. There was a pedestrian killed there today because there's no turning light on any of these major intersections. 92nd Street and Dahlgren Place needs a turning light, and so does 86th Street, Dahlgren, and 86th Street and 7th Avenue. They need a turning light so that our children are safe to walk to school. I have two children in eighth grade that go to PSIS 104, and I thank God today at 4 o'clock when I found out that my kids were home safely and we're not the pedestrian that was killed on 92nd and Dahlgren Place today. So please take that into consideration. Parking spots, parking lights, and know that from a principal of a school and from a resident that lives here on Dahlgren Place. I'd like for you to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Margaret Colsey. Is this supposed to help? Who is this supposed to help? This proposal, who is it going to help? You're doing more damage to the area. Every morning I travel along 7th Avenue to get on the Bell Parkway. Today there were 41 trucks. 41. And you want to take away 28 parking spots? You're ridiculous. There's no need. It's not safe. It's not safe. The bike lane is another joke and a half. They're not in the bike lane majority of the time. They're weaving in and out. They really don't care. And you just really want to do this damage. I'm here 54 years on Battery Avenue. It's getting to be a hellhole over here. 
He's got to do something smart, not stupid. Okay. I was I was asked not to speak anymore until everyone has been heard from. So so okay. Okay. So there was a suggestion earlier which we accepted and we're going to listen to the audience members here first. So we're going to get through three more people and then we will hear from the DOT who has accumulated and has been listening um, hopefully. So uh, I have, I think, a Larry uh, list. I'm sorry, I really <laughs> cannot read this one, but Larry, please come up. I'm also really bad at reading names, so apologies. Hi, Larry List. Um, we live on 7th Avenue at the corner of 90th Street, and we, we rarely see a bike rider go by, so this giant bike lane is a joke. Plus, a pedestrian walk is, is totally un unnecessary. Um, I would like to know what's going to happen with the trucks. I think signs and enforcement would solve that problem rather than all this other construction. Um, and as for the speeders and, and reckless driving, put a couple of speed bumps in. They're very cheap, <laughs> and they wouldn't be able to speed. We don't need this. Um, and by the way, I haven't heard anybody talk about the cost. No one has mentioned what this is going to cost. It's not free. It's a big project. I understand need to do something for the school, but removing the slip lanes, I don't think that's a good idea, especially the one at Poly Place. That lets the traffic flow past that corner. Otherwise, you're gonna make everyone stop, jam up. It gets jammed up too much as it is. So I think that's a bad idea also. Um, I guess that's, what's that? Oh, yeah, the, the traffic from the Barrozano backs up. I don't know what you can do about that. Uh, I don't think this addresses that at all. Um, but every morning, the, the, the traffic is stopped dead one direction. Every night, stopped dead in the other direction. So I think uh, those issues haven't been addressed. And um, that's what I have to say. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, we have Barbara Agostino. Um, I live on 90th Street on the corner of 90th and Battery, uh, where it is going to be affected. I think a lot of um, what I wanted to say um, has, ar has already been said. Um, but I'm a little concerned because um, it's a residential area. Um, parking is, at a, is, is you know, at a premium. And now you're eliminating 28 spots, which we can't park to begin with. Every house has at least two or three cars. Um, I don't see how that's going to help. And as somebody also mentioned, the Verrazano Bridge, especially on Friday afternoons, you have to see the backup. I mean, sometimes you can't get down your own block. So I understand and I respect it. I, I know it's, it's helping the school and I have nothing against it. Um, but you're not looking out for the residents. We live here. You know, you don't live here, so you don't know what it's like. Um, my daughter's five-month-old car was hit and, and destroyed um, in a parking spot because somebody was coming down Battery Avenue where there's, a, where there's a, sp a stop sign. They stopped and then sped up and hit the car right outside my home. Um, it, it's, it's crazy. So I'm just, uh, and I think I speak for most of, of um, my neighbors, um, a lot of the cars are going to speed. So if you switch 90th and 88th Street, I think the cars are going to be speeding to get down to, get down to these streets. 7th Avenue in the morning is a parking lot. You know, I take the train to work, but there are times when I have to drop my husband off, and to get, we go down, straight down Battery, and then we have to make a left. You can't even make a left because the cars are flying down 88th Street. You can't get out of your own, your own area. And then 7th Avenue, when you're coming back with all the trucks, it's only gonna be worse when you have the school buses and you have parents picking up, and then how are you putting school buses on a residential area? There's a lot of older residents that live there also. So I don't think you're looking into, you know, the residents. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Okay, uh, thank you. Um, will John Maddock please step up? You're good? Okay. All right, Michael Cunningham. Yeah, if you want to come up here and give it. All right. Um, we, we appreciate all of your feedback on our proposal, and we will uh, take all of your concerns into consideration as we work towards uh, our final proposal for this area. We will, uh, we will keep the community board informed, and they will, in turn, keep you informed um, to address some of the concerns. Um, is there anything particular? Yes, uh, so as far as the timeline, uh, the proposed timeline would be for all of this to go in over the summer uh, and be completed in time for uh, the new school to open in the fall. Um, this, is, uh, this would be an in-house project done with, with in-house funds. It would be primarily just restriping the road, uh, a few areas of pouring concrete, so it's, it's a very quick timeline. Um, so it would not be any major construction impacts to the area or uh, any like uh, you know extended road closures or anything like that. Um, anything else? Before we do? The the trucks. So so the trucks. Yes. Um, so we as DOT do not have any enforcement capabilities. We don't. The, so I, I want to speak about enforcement for a moment, if I can. The community board has repeatedly requested enforcement of truck traffic along the perimeter of the um, golf course. There have been many actions by the precinct to boot trucks. Towing trucks is, an, is a very difficult um, process in the city because there's limited large tows. There are limited spaces to tow to. 
There are a number of different ideas and proposals. The commanding officer of the precinct we have a relationship with. We will be speaking to her after this. It's two agencies that do enforcement. One is the police department, and the other is the Department of Sanitation. I know it seems unbelievable, but the number of summonses that are issued, because I look at the data, is significant. Um, sanitation happens to issue more summonses than Wait, I, I, I'm speaking. I, I, I was respectful. Like, if you just allow me, to, allow me to speak. But we agree. We, I live here. I live in Diker. I walk around the golf course regularly. I understand. I understand the fears. I understand the... Um, it, it looks like a truck depot. It's unacceptable. And it has been an enforcement challenge that is not only here. It's citywide. I mean, there are many places throughout the city. And I think we have to do better. We will take it back. The officers who are here tonight are not part of that division, but I will be speaking to the commanding officer. I know that the Department of Transportation does have meetings with the police department. We will all um, bring it back. The elected officials I know um, regularly bring this up. It's Facebook occasionally. You'll see the, the precinct will post tow operations. It's a dent. It hasn't made a significant difference, and we, we do realize it, but I, I assure you we will bring it back to the precinct. Yes, and, and I could tell you every, every day, every day I get a call. We work very well with sanitation. There is something called an MLP truck. Um, while the perimeter is the parks department, local sanitation has responded. They've made that a routine um, area where they go out. It, it, we get a call or a complaint. I had, there was a big dump out over the weekend. Someone texted me a photo on a Saturday. I gave it to the, the super, and, and he was there within a few hours to collect it. So we are on the, the garbage and the sanitation. Um, call it in. You can call it into 311. You can call our offices, the elected officials, and, and we, we do report that. We do realize it's an issue because the trucks block the, the right of way, so people who are looking to, to dump are doing it. There are cameras that were put up, too, to collect illegal dumpers. Um, as well, it is, a, it is a location that is called the condition location, so the agencies are aware. Well, that's good to know that we could also let the uh, precinct commander know about. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate that. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just take one more question. No, that's not correct. That's not correct. The, this, the rules, the traffic rules of the city of New York specify that trucks cannot park overnight, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. on any residential street. The area around the perimeter of the golf course is zoned residential. It is not tied to truck routes. It is tied to the zoning rules. The zoning rules around the perimeter of that golf course, it's a residential district, period. They are not permitted to park overnight. Yes. Yes. They've studied it, believe it or not. I mean, I don't want to speak for DOT, but that... It, it was studied. Uh, I'm sorry. It was studied, and it didn't meet the the, um, the warrants requirements for safety. Okay, I'm going to turn it back over to the chair. Okay. We're going to turn it back to DLT. I think they've heard quite a few of those questions there. Feel free to answer those, please, or, or. Okay. 
Hello, everybody. I'm going to try to, for, if we could just wait for one second, I'm going to try to answer some of the issues. Um, my name is Nick Carey. I also work at DOT. Let me tell you just a little bit about why we're here. We're from the school safety unit at DOT. Our goal is to prevent youth injuries. Now, we, you're, hey, hey, let me finish. Please let me finish. I would like to help answer these questions. I can't do it if you're going to interrupt. Please. Okay? Please. We, can, you, can I finish, please? Can I finish? We are not building this school. We did not pick this school site. We did, let me finish, please. I can't, I can't address this if you don't let me finish. Please. Okay? Please. We did not pick the school site. We are not building the school. We did not design the school's layout. What we know is that a school is coming at a very difficult location. 86th Street and 7th Avenue is a challenging place to put a school. Not our choice, not our choice. Not our choice. This wasn't our idea, okay? We're to some extent in the same boat as you in that now we have to deal with it, right? We're brought in to try to make it safer. There's going to be thousands of students. There's going to be thousands of students coming to 86th Street and 7th Avenue starting at the end of the summer, all right? 6,000? Hundreds, hundreds, 600. Oh, 600, sorry. <laughs> now, the, the treatments we're proposing, they may seem exotic to you guys, but we've installed them all over the five boroughs. We've analyzed them to death, and we get excellent safety results with them. The speeding out front that we've seen on 7th Avenue is unacceptable. And on a, in front of this school, in front of a new school, it's crazy. We cannot have that kind of speeding in front of a school. And the treatment that we're proposing, the treatment, to, that's an Wait. excellent question I don't have an answer to. But the treatment we're proposing for 7th Avenue, let me go to it. Um, one second. We've done in other parts of the city and we've had excellent results reducing speeding. Part of the issue is that in the existing condition, although it's one lane and then there's a bike lane and the buffer, people still speed because they have all this room. They know that they can swerve if they have to, they can swerve into the bike lane, which is often empty. And in the proposed condition, it's physically tighter. It's harder to speed in those conditions. And we've done this in several places and had positive results. Now, I wanna talk about one other thing. Uh, Trying to make pedestrian safety improvements at a school that will be located at 7th Avenue and 86th Street is very tough. I mean, you guys know this location. This is not a place where we can just install a bunch of islands and stop everybody. There's so much traffic. We built a whole traffic model. We tried some more aggressive options. We said, can we remove lanes places? Can we remove the left turn lane? And we can't because it would have a huge impact and back up. That's why we're planning to maintain all the lanes of traffic on 86th Street and 7th Avenue and maintain all the turn lanes. Because we looked at it and we realized that if we tried to remove any of that, it would create the traffic that you guys are anxious about. And that's why we're not doing it. So looking at this location and trying to figure out how can we possibly make safety improvements, how can we make it safer for all these kids coming here, one of the things we looked at was this uh, slip lane at, Poly at, I'm sorry, at Parrot Place, 88th Street and 7th Avenue. Now we've been receiving complaints about this slip lane for years from residents saying that it's dangerous and it's, uh, it's unsafe. And we saw this school as an opportunity to take it on. It's not the most critical piece of the plan. And a lot of, hey, whoa, 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 let me finish, let me finish. I want to talk about it a little bit, all right? Now, there's a lot of different pieces to this plan. This one is not, frankly, the most critical part. We thought we could make an improvement here, okay, that would close the slip lane and make it easier for people to get around. And we thought that the one-way conversions would make this still convenient for, for drivers to get to Parrot Place and still function with the neighborhood. What we're hearing tonight is that these one-way conversions and the closure of this slip lane is problematic. And we can accept that uh, feedback. So, you know, one possibility in, in situations like this where we have a big proposal with a lot of different scope is that in your, uh, sometimes other community boards in their response, has said something to the equivalent of, we're supportive of the project, but we don't like this component of it. And if you can put that in, uh, put that in a resolution, that helps us go back and say, here's what, to our bosses, this is why we can't do this piece. Um, you know, I, and part of this is, it's tough. You, you try to have some instincts about what's uh, engineering feasible and politically feasible, and we don't know until we try it. So from our perspective, which I think was wrong, 
making a one-way conversion of 88th and 90th streets wouldn't be the end of the world. They're little streets, and they don't have a lot of traffic on them. This maybe should be okay. What we're hearing tonight is that this is a deal breaker for you guys, all right? We get it. We hear you. Our goal here, I just want to point out, there was a question earlier, why are we here? Who is this supposed to benefit? It's supposed to benefit residents and everybody who lives here, but the reason we're here is for the students that are coming. Uh, and All right, I've, I've, done, I've done my answering. Okay. I'm back off. Can we, one more, one more question there, Mark. Is, it, is that a suggestion for a speed bump or am I misunderstanding? Okay, one more. Okay, so what, what I'm hearing is that we, as a committee here, um, you know, obviously we've been hearing quite a bit about the feedback from the residents who obviously live right next door to the school here, and the fact that the school, again, is coming. There's four suggestions that I'm hearing that we should suggest back to DOT, right? One is to keep Parrot, uh, Parrot Place, uh, keep the direction of the two streets as is 88 and 90th, and then switch Battery Avenue, investigate what that, what that would impact from a traffic study perspective. And then I think also like the bus shelters, um, someone mentioned that, like uh, uh, making sure the bus islands have shelters on top of them to make sure keeping them out of the rain, um, as well as the speed bumps. There were some suggestions within 7th Avenue, there's not a lot of speed bumps, but adding speed bumps within that. Um, I'm just gonna, please. We, we, do not, we, we do not install speed bumps on truck routes. So that, so that portion of 7th Avenue cannot get speed, speed humps. So that is, yeah, that is, yeah, partly so because of what you're saying. Cameras. Cameras, okay. Let me, let me switch it off for cameras.
Okay, thank you. There was there was Wait, one more that I forgot so, I forgot to mention. It was a it was a movement of a bus stop from Diker Diker Beach to the school. So it was like bus stop over there. I think the MTA FYI is looking at redesigning bus. The MTA is looking at redesigning bus routes uh, across Brooklyn. So this will be a feedback we'll, we'll get back to them. But um, that would be that's a good suggestion. I just want to make sure anything else uh, in terms of suggestions. It's, it's kind of, yeah. That is fair. I will say that the bike lane itself, by moving it closer to the, the park itself, right, moves away from the ambulances, right, in that, in that case. But also, it is a very dangerous area to bike right now. It is a very dangerous area to run. It's, it's already two lanes, so we're, all, we're just, they're just moving the lanes from one location to another. By moving the, uh, by removing the median, by removing the median to add to the pedestrians. So there's no lane reduction, right, as I understand it. The pedestrian space is added on to, and then the bike lane stays the same. So... So here, here's, the, here's the other thing, everybody. What you understand is that the DOT is paying uh, for this, right? And the DOT is not spending that much money to do this. Uh, they quoted me last time that it's just a little bit of painting, right? So this is basically like, hey, we'll try this. We need to get it done by the time school opens. They're going to continue to monitor this, right? And then we can switch back, switch around. If the trucks don't go away, if they reduce... Okay. Okay. So, as I mentioned, we're going to make the recommendation based off the feedback we heard today, um, which is those ones I listed shelter, slip lane, direction, Battery Avenue. I'm gonna turn it back to committee for any additional comments. Um, but but the, basically the next step here is that we'll write the letter, uh, we're gonna be presenting it as the, at the following um, community board meeting, which is on the 20th. 20th, it's gonna be on the, on the 20th, uh, I think we moved it, on the, on the 20th. Um, and you guys are welcome to come to that meeting to discuss again um, this month, exactly. Uh, no, it will be Bay Ridge Center, Bay Ridge Center, 15 Bay Ridge Avenue. Uh, yes. Uh, but this is, this is very public. The meeting, that, that meeting is public. That happens every single uh, month on the fourth Monday. But it will be, this, that will be the meeting. I, I'm telling you now, that will be a meeting where we're going to make these recommendations based off the feedback that you're giving to us, the committee, right? And we're going to give back to DOT. Uh, with that said, I'm going to turn it to the committee if there's any, any other comments. Carmen, please. I just have one quick question. I keep hearing narrow streets, narrow streets. When you're doing your assessments, have, has any, is part of the assessment somebody driving a school bus through those same streets that you're proposing now? Um, sorry. To, uh, what, what, what aspect of the school bus is this going through are you asking no, about? No, because I keep hearing that some of these streets are narrow. So I'm just trying to envision, does anybody from your department actually go into a, drive a school bus through these same streets? Oh, sorry. Okay, so, so as, as part of our uh, design work, when, whenever we do any sort of redesigning the street, we have uh, our you know, CAD software that every engineer uses uh, that models truck turns, bus turns, 
uh, fire fire truck turns, ambulance, like you know, all all the all the kinds of larger vehicles that go through. We model all of the turns that we're impacting to make sure that the vehicles will fit through those turns, and they're not. So this is you know this is why we end up. Uh, not being able to do some of the uh, the treatments that we originally come up with is because oh we we say oh we want to you know we want to tighten things up a lot here to really slow down vehicles turning so that they don't turn too fast and run over somebody crossing the street. But if we look at the model and it shows oh uh, a fire department a fire truck can't get through or a bus can't make that turn, then you know we have to pare it back a little bit. So we we model all of our turns to make sure that the appropriate size vehicles can make it. Yes. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about process. Uh, I heard that question. So this is the Traffic and Transportation Committee. The community board is advisory. They're going to make a recommendation to send to the Department of Transportation. It will go back to DOT. DOT will assess it. They will get back to us, and we will share that information with you. Um, we ask that everyone sign up. For those of you that don't have um, email, you can call our office. We will give you updates. For those of you who do have email, we will create a list of, of residents. If you know any residents that want to be added to our list, we have a very comprehensive newsletter that we send out. Um, and then we also do very specific emails to correspond with, with residents. We will keep in touch with you. Um, how we do notification, someone said that they didn't receive a notification. We actually go out and walk door, door to door. Dorothy and I, we met many of you, um, we, we do door to door within the perimeter of the, of the project area. In addition, we did mail to 88th and 90th Street to Department of Finance records that, that we had. Um, we do try to post on social media. It's a big challenge for a small agency to get notification out, but we really do try our best. So we do appreciate you reaching out to your neighbors. So anyone who wants updates can call the community board office. Um, I'll say for the live stream as well, 718-745-6827. Um, and in addition, we uh, will be keeping in touch with you. But the committee will make a recommendation. It'll be forwarded to the um, Department of Transportation, and we'll have you know we'll have an answer when when um, the department reviews all of the suggestions. And there were many good ones tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Josephine. As uh, as the district manager mentioned, I'm putting on the floor the suggestions I made earlier. Um, I'm going to repeat the same again. Add a bus uh, add bus shelters at bus islands. Uh, remove uh, keep the slip lane. Keep the direction of the two streets, Battery Avenue, switch the direction at speed cameras uh, along 7th Avenue, and move the bus stop from Thacker Beach. I know, Stephanie, you had a suggestion. May I just add what I had originally discussed was the intersection of the Fort Hamilton Army Garrison, 7th Avenue, and Polly Place, um, both for safety, to, uh, to consider a traffic light, and then also to re-examine the traffic flows there because they are not fluid at all, and the impact of removing that slip lane on Polly Place um, on the traffic flow. Thank you. Okay, so the motion's on the floor. Um, any comments from the committee? Okay. I just want to say thank you for coming out and thank you for giving these suggestions. As I said in the beginning, they were things you were looking at before, and I know that I'm going to be able to take those into account. Okay, I appreciate it. All right, all in favor? All opposed? Any recusals? All right, thank you. Um, so as I'm just going to repeat one more time, we're going to be writing this letter. We're going to be presenting a community board larger meeting on June 20th, Bay Ridge, um, 15 Bay Ridge Avenue, where we're going to present that at 7 p.m. Um, and then after that larger board votes on that, we're going to send it to the OT, who's going to review it, assess it, based off of all the changes that you guys are su suggesting, and then we'll, they'll keep the community district office uh, uh, informed. So feel free to contact us um, then. Thank you so much. Thank you, Polly Prep, for hosting us, um, and have a good rest of the evening. The cost? Uh, it's 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 not that much. It comes it comes out of the city budget. Uh, it's not any like additional cost.